Welcome in to Fan Sided as we bring in one of the finest individuals you've ever seen play on the basketball court. David Robinson is with us, the 10 time All Star, NBA MVP, two time champion, still going to many a San Antonio Spurs game. Uh, David, I want to start there, I guess. Uh, let's keep it current for a minute. What, what do you think of the Spurs' chances this year? I like them. You know, I think that they're starting to get the rhythm about the right time. Tony Parker's starting to look like himself. Kawhi Leonard is is growing into you know the the, the monster that he is, um, and Tim Duncan is still rolling along. We you know we got a little banged up with uh, Manu the other day, but but yeah, I like our chances. I think we um, if we can stay healthy, we'll, we'll be right in the mix. And of course, you played with Timmy way back in the day. Now I guess we could put it. Did you know right away that this guy was maybe going to go down as you know a Hall of Fame player, and some people would call him the best power forward of all time? I don't know if I can say I knew all that, but I, I knew he was going to be outstanding. Yeah, he, he, he came in with a great skill set. He spent four years in college, so he was very mature. Um, he knew how to make other players better. He knew how to win. Um, you know, that kind of seasoning just takes time. And, you know, a lot of guys nowadays aren't willing to put that time in there. Uh, but, but he was, and it paid off well for him. David Robinson with us here talking. Uh, you're also doing great work with Pizza Hut. I, I want to go back. Let's go 1992 Dream Team, David. And I, I remember one clip that I've seen a million times where it's you and Michael, and it's after practice, and I think you're taunting Barkley and saying you you never came down to their end of the court one time. Can can you recall what I'm speaking of? <laughs> uh, I don't remember the particular instance, but there was a lot of taunting going on during that team experience. Man, we had you know some of the you know greatest guys, and everybody was an alpha dog. And and so uh, so everyone I think was uh, was kind of peeing on their territory uh, for the upcoming season because you know at the pro level it's it's all about uh, who gets in whose head. What was that experience like for you? I mean, when you look back on your career, does that rank at the top of wow? If I could go back and do something again, that would be you know right there. Yeah, from a basketball standpoint, there's nothing better. I mean, every day in practice you get to go against the very best guys and. Um, and, and so it was basketball kind of at its purest level, which was, to, you know, to me, just a blast. I, I got a chance to grow and learn and, um, and and get to know some guys who, you know, you're you're constantly fighting against. So so to see them on a different level and learn from them was, was pretty special. Carl Malone and the Utah Jazz, we, we couldn't stand those guys. But then playing with them every day and getting in the weight room with Carl Malone was an awesome experience. I mean, that, that guy is a monster. He works hard. He's, he's just a fantastic athlete, but, uh, but a very driven athlete. And, and, you know, it was great for me to be able to see that part of him. David Robinson doing great work with Pizza Hut. They have a $1 million contest for anyone who can sink a half-court shot backwards. That event's uh, coming up in, in Indy on, on, on a Final Four weekend, Sunday, April the 5th. All right, I'm going to put you on the spot a couple times here, David. Malone or Barkley, you're an NBA GM. You can have one for their career. Who would you take? <laughs> Malone or Barkley? Mm-hmm. Um, I'd have to say Carl on that one. I mean, Carl was Carl was incredibly steady, um, put up monster numbers to be the number two scorer of all time. Um, that's that's very impressive. I, uh, you know, Charles was a was a force to be reckoned with uh, most of the time. But you know there were times when Charles was, uh, uh, you know, probably more trouble than he's worth, as you can see on <laughs> TNT every every night now. But uh, but you know Charles had a, obviously a Hall of Fame career, was phenomenal. But but between those two, mm, I'd probably have to go with Carl. I saw his face enough times to know how good he was. If you could have played with Michael or Magic, who would you have picked? Oh wow, good question. Um, Ooh. Uh, you might uh, you might see the ball more with Magic, but, you know, Michael's Michael. Yeah, I, I think that would be it. You know, with Showtime, they like to run up and down the court, and, and Magic loved to get the ball to the big guys when they ran. So I'd have to say, I'd have to say Magic. He, 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 he'd be my guy, man. He'd be feeding me dunks and lobs all day long. I, I, I'd go with that. I mean, Mike would probably give it to you, too. Uh, no, Mike, <laughs> Mike will be scoring 60. I have to go get the rebound. <laughs> People always talk about Jordan's competitiveness, and I, do you have a story around that at all? 
I mean, you know, he he's yeah, he's probably one of the most intense guys I've ever seen um, when it comes to you know competing on a day to day basis. I mean, I I remember on, on the dream team we were, you know, we were um, in the airport uh, picking up our bags and we were standing by the by the delivery bag delivery and he looks at me and he says, hey, you know, I'll bet you a hundred bucks my bag comes out before yours, and I'm thinking. Why would I care? <laughs> Your bag goes out before mine. But you know, but that's just him. He's just always competing. He just and, and we go play golf, and he just he and, and that's what part of the reason he is so great. He just always was looking for a way to beat you, and um and, and you know that's that was a lesson for me. You know, knowing that that you know the mental part of the game was so very important. David Robinson with us here, a fan side doing great work with Pizza Hut. You you want to speak on that a little bit, David? I'll, I'll, you guys are uh, you're bringing it back to a uh, little throwback here. You and Dickie Vitale. Yeah. It was it was a f- I, I watched this commercial. It's phenomenal. Oh, well, thanks, man. You know, 20, 20 years ago, I did the commercial with Dennis Rodman. We introduced the stuff crust, and that was a, that was a lot of fun. And now um, they're bringing back that nine ninety nine nine ninety nine price after after twenty years, and so. So people can can enjoy the stuffed crust again. So it, it's it's really a blast being able to do this with Pizza Hut. They, they they're a great organization, and um and, and it's just it, it's been a blessing. And over the over the final four, someone's going to get a chance to win a million dollars if they go to stuff crust uh, stuff crust shot dot com and and um, sign up. You know they get, they may get a chance to get out there and make a a backwards half court shot and win a million bucks. See, we're up here in Chicago. Benny the Bull, the Bulls mascot, he does that all the time. Is he eligible? <laughs> well, I think anybody who's made over five in their lifetime is not eligible. I don't know what the rules are, but, <laughs> well, but Benny, Benny probably, he's a ringer. Yeah, he, ben, Benny's, Benny's big time. All right, a uh, couple more on-the-spot questions. Akeem or Shaq, who was tougher to go against? Whew. Uh, you know what, um... Shaq was size wise. Shaq was just uh, you know just scary at three fifty seven one. He just was a he was a tough guy to move around. You couldn't move him. But I think from a from a skill standpoint, um, you know, Akeem just had he had everything. I, you know, he was he, I, I'd say he was tougher. And I saw him I saw him you know six times a year. Or so um, so I think I just had a little more experience with him as well. And um, and and Akeem would be the guy. I mean, if I'm if I'm starting a team, you know, that's probably the guy I would start with. David Robinson, 10-time NBA All-Star, the Hall of Famer with us here for a couple more moments. I, w- I would think that you and Akeem probably had a great relationship. I mean, you're both such class guys. Did you get along with him? Yeah, we got along great. You know, he's a very intelligent guy. I mean, we've had some great conversations. We actually shot a commercial together um, and and got a chance to spend time on the airplane um, flying back, and it was, man, it was just a, a rich, rich conversation, man. I I have a lot of respect for Akeem. You know, his faith is very, very strong, and he's, um, uh, you know, he's a great teammate. He's a great leader and a phenomenal player. Um, there's nothing not to like about Akeem Olajuwon. Let me give you two real quick wrap-ups here. Uh, first of all, you started playing basketball later in life. You, 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 it wasn't your first sport. What, what's your recommendation, I guess, out there to parents who have a kid who maybe they want him to be a basketball star or he wants to be a basketball star? Do, do you look at it like, hey, you need to focus on this? What would you say? Uh, I would say, you know, it, that's fantastic, but, you know, you've got to learn how to take all take advantage of whatever options are available to you. And, you know, your first option is school, obviously. That's going to that's gonna give you the widest opportunity for success. You get your grades right, you get into a great school, um, and then the basketball or the football or the whatever sport will take care of itself. So, you know, having three boys myself, I've been through this three times. My oldest son, um, you know, chose not to play sports in college, and he's doing a fantastic job. He's graduating from UT, Texas. And my middle son plays football, which I know very little about, but I'm enjoying. Uh, and 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 uh, my youngest son is uh, wants to play basketball. He's going to play basketball at Duke. So um, for these guys... I'm getting a chance to, you know, watch them, but, but, you know, the sports always um, comes after the academics. You know, you start with, you know, your very, very best chance to be successful, and and then, you know, if you work hard, um, there's, you know, you'll have a shot. You'll give yourself a chance with the sports, uh, but, uh, but, you know, you always just take advantage of your best opportunities. Along those lines, though, say, say a guy's a freshman or whatever, he's a high school senior, and an NBA team wants to draft him top ten. Should be, should he be able to go pro? 
Yeah, I think he, the action should be there. I mean, there should be some intelligent adults in his life saying, no, man, go to college. Right. <laughs> but, 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 yeah, I mean, I, I don't think you should take away his option. Um, I, I, for, for 95% of the kids, I, I think it's a terrible choice. But, um, but I mean, it's, it's a choice that you should be able to have, yeah. And last one for you, let's, let's wrap it up where we started with the Spurs. What makes Pop so good at what he does? Um, you know, I think he's got a good perspective. You know, he, he he's um, he's disciplined. Um, you know, he's he uses his military background. He's intelligent. He's a very very intelligent guy and and, and very thoughtful. Um, and, and I think he's learned over the years. You know, how to manage players, how to be around them, and um, and bring the best out of their players. You know, one of the great traits of a leader is knowing how to put people in a position where they can be successful. And that's something I think he's really mastered. If not the Spurs this year, just take them out of it. Who do you think wins the whole thing? Uh, wow, um, it is it's so difficult. I, I I say, you know, I, I, my my answer would be the Thunder if they if they had been healthy all year. They may struggle because of their um, their injury uh, bug, but um, but they have the most experience, and you know they're they're the kind of the team that. That to me is most scary when they're all together, but um, I love the way Golden State's played. I, I just think that they um, they put themselves in a great position. Uh, I love Steph Curry; I think he's a stud, um, and I think he'll. You know, they gave us a really tough run in the playoffs a couple years ago, and um, I, yeah, I like them. And then Cleveland with you know Kyrie Irving, if he puts up fifty-seven <laughs> points, and, and and they got LeBron and and Kevin Lowe, I, I don't know. I don't know how you defend that stuff. You would have followed them. Those, those are my favorites. Yeah, I, would, I wouldn't have let them get to the rim. I'm going to tell you that much. Sure. But, uh, but this is a different day and age. They may kick me out for following them <laughs> today. David Robinson, always a class act. We really appreciate you taking time and uh, continued success to you. And great work with Pizza Hut on the throwback. We're, uh, we're looking forward to somebody winning that money come uh, Final Four weekend. Oh, man, that would be fantastic, wouldn't it? Yeah, so thanks, thanks, thanks for having me on today. That's awesome.